Hello everyone. Today we're talking about Plarium. What is the company behind the game we love doing right? And what are they doing wrong? What could they improve? And how well do they respond to criticism? All that and more after the intro. Some love them, others hate them. Plarium, a corporation that, in addition to Raid Shadow Legends and some other games, also operates Mech Arena. Before we get into the specific things I mentioned at the beginning, I want to share with you my personal experience and development regarding the game that I have gained in my two and a half years of playing time. I started playing Mech Arena in August 2021. Back then, the game consisted of 15 different mechs and around 35, 40 weapons. The pilot system didn't exist yet, and weapons like the Disc Launcher 8 or the Carbine 12 dominated the meta at that time. Killshot and Ares were the best mechs on the field, and Surge was actually one of the worst mechs in the entire game. New players might not be able to imagine this, but Surge is only good now because it received a significant buff later in the game. The beauty of Mech Arena back then was that the game was very straightforward. Pilots and implants did not exist, the selection of mechs and weapons was clear, and it was entirely clear which mechs were good and desirable and which ones to avoid. The shop offers were much cheaper than they are today, although Mech Arena was never cheap, and the game's look was significantly more cartoonish than it is today. In the background, I'm playing old videos that illustrate how the game looked up until a year ago. Back then, it was also easier to obtain free resources. For example, through derbies or the lucky treasure rush, there was neither a battle pass nor a clan system. All of this would only be introduced into the game much later. However, there were also negative aspects. An extreme plague of that time was the mortar. This weapon dominated the game for a considerable period. And if you watch older gameplays of mine, you will notice that I often, if not always, started with the mortar and could achieve well over 30 kills per round with this weapon. The bots back then were harmless. Even in the end game, they were only at rank 4, very weakly armed and basically just cannon fodder. The bots were so easy to defeat that sometimes it felt like Plarium was making fun of us in this way. A negative aspect of Mech Arena at that time was that the game felt stagnant. There simply was nothing new. Rarely a new weapon, and here and there some nice skins, but nothing else. No new mechs, no new maps, just nothing. And that for a very long time. People complained that Plarium just wasn't bringing anything new, and constantly playing the same maps with the same bots was starting to get boring. But in December 2021, it finally happened. Stalker and Tenga entered the arena and took the gameplay to a whole new level. And from that moment on, Plarium began to slide from one extreme to the other. Over the next few years, we got a variety of new weapons and mechs. I would even say that there is now too much equipment being thrown onto the market. We now have 33 mechs, and another one is already in the pipeline, and almost 140 weapons. But we'll come to that later. Stalker and Tang were two mechs that strongly changed the gameplay of Mech Arena. No longer Mortar, but Disc Launcher on Stalker and Shotgun 8 on Tenga were now the guiding weapons on the battlefield. The Mortar was still very strong, but it was particularly strong in its tracks by Tang's. The Shotgun also made Shadow playable again, because it was the only weapon at level 8 that could be used in the endgame. And then came the EM rifle. The EM rifle is still one of the best weapons in the game today and shifted the game again from close combat to fights that were fought over long distances. A very positive aspect of this weapon, however, was that from then on you could use practically any mech you owned. Lancer, for example. You often saw it with EM rifle or Paragon. You can complain a lot about the weapon. It's too overpowered, you can only play sniper, but one thing this weapon has accomplished, and that is that you could just play anything. And that was great and incredibly fun. It was generally a time in Mech Arena when we could effectively use everything we had leveled up. There have always been positive and negative aspects to this game, 
but at a certain point you just noticed that Plarium wanted to make more and more profit. And that brings us to the positive and negative aspects of Mech Arena. In the end, I will suggest some things that could significantly improve the game. So stay tuned. Let's start with the positives. Plarium brought us the Battle Pass. You get free resources here even if you don't buy the Gold Pass. And if you buy the Gold Pass for a few Euros, you get a lot of resources for a very cheap price that you would otherwise have to pay much more for. This is really a good offer that Plarium is making to us here, and both free-to-play players and payers get their money's worth here. There are more Derby events where you can get crates and credits, and sometimes even a few acorns. The introduction of the modifier is also extremely positive, and the fact that Plarium has given us a Kanta or Neve, or even the two Neymar pilots as gifts, is nothing to complain about. Another very nice point is the fact that we are provided with a lot of new maps, and that Plarium now makes many of the meta-relevant weapon systems available in the Gear Hub system for in-game currency. But overall, Mech Arena is unfortunately developing in a very unfavorable direction. Due to the Gear Hub system, for example, the desired mechs can now only be unlocked freely by investing hard-earned resources, specifically for free-to-play players, in mechs and weapons, that they actually don't want to play. But you have to do this to unlock the next level. So not only is it more difficult for you to get the desired mech, but also to level up the mech. Because you already had to spend your resources beforehand just to get to this mech in the first place. Then we have the pilots or the implants and the implant parts needed for them. If you want to rebuild a pilot, you have to spend a fortune on acorns for the implant parts if you want to recycle 100% of your implant parts. For four legendary and fully upgraded implants, you would have to spend 16,000 acorns, which is more than 120 euros, just to get access to resources that you have already paid for anyway. Why Plarium does this is completely logical. If exchanging the implants and recycling 100% of the implant parts were completely free, everyone would eventually have enough parts to not have to buy new ones anymore, and Plarium would no longer make a profit from this item. And that's why they make you pay for it. As much as I understand this from a business perspective, I find it outrageous from a player's perspective. The next negative aspect is a complete oversaturation of the market with completely useless equipment. We have 33 mechs, soon 34 and round about 150 weapons. You don't know what to play anymore. New players don't even know what they're actually working towards. Many mechs are acquired, played for a day, and then never used again simply because you already have five mechs that work well. And while Plarium showers us with paid equipment that everyone is now fed up with, they fail to fix bugs that urgently need fixing. The disc launchers have been flying in slow motion for a year when fired diagonally upwards. Disruptor bullets are shot by bots in the opposite direction to the player, and yet you die. Bots with EM rifles shoot away, even though the turret hasn't even turned in the direction of the player yet, etc. When they do fix bugs, they are display bugs in the shop or in the inventory. They proudly write in the in-game news, We fixed a display error affecting the color of the new button in the inventory tab. But who cares about that? Nobody cares about that. Fix the bugs that hinder the fluid gameplay and not inventory cosmetics that have no practical use anyway. Then we come to the treasure rushes. Normally, there were 16 rewards there, and you at least had a somewhat realistic chance of getting the main reward, the new mech or weapon, between the first and fourth attempt. But to ensure that a broad mass of players definitely has to spend well over 100 euros to acquire the new item, they have increased the rewards from 16 to 50, and thus ensure that the probability of drawing the main reward early is reduced to the Olympic idea. Plarium makes it incredibly difficult for free-to-play players, as well as players who occasionally shop for small amounts, to progress in this game. And in the long run, they're shooting themselves in the foot with it. Then we have the bots. They used to be hardly worth mentioning. They were boring and easy to destroy. Today we find ourselves at the extreme opposite of all that. The bots are sometimes game-changing. How often have games been lost even though you had far more kills than the opponent, 
just because one of the bots was allowed to score 16 kills. As a content creator, I have had the opportunity to get to know some game designers and other employees of Plarium, and I believe these people when they say that there is also a lot of passion in the game alongside financial interests. When you talk to these people, you can tell that they enjoy what they do. But unfortunately, that doesn't change the fact that Plarium currently has some construction sites to work on with Mech Arena. They took away the lucky treasure rush from us, and thus the opportunity to get 400 A-coins for free every few weeks. They say that the Arena Playoff is now the replacement for this, and that you could even get significantly more A-coins for free here, which is true, but only for the first three places on the list. Only the first three places of the playoffs can pocket their acorns, and the rest are dismissed with a few credits and a gold crate. With the lucky treasure rush, you could only get 400 acorns, but everyone could get that, and not just the first three on some list. They have also tinkered with the battle pass again, 300 credits less in the vault and fewer credits in the battle pass itself. And even if we get one more advanced implant box for it, that's not a good trade-off. Plarium is currently giving us less and less for more and more money, and that is a huge mistake in the long run. So what should Plarium do to restore the game to its former glory? Give free-to-play players more opportunities to get free resources. Increase the weekly rewards from 200 to 400 acorns. Increase the chance of drawing the main prize from the treasure rushes to at least 1% and allow players to earn three of these coins. Lower the prices in the shop. This way you will make more profit in the long run because people will be more willing to spend money more often if they see that you are not just thinking of yourselves, dear people from Plarium. Give us time to breathe. Give us a year to level and play the existing equipment instead of overwhelming us with new equipment several times a month. Just step on the brakes a bit. The things I criticize and suggest here do not only reflect my opinion, but also the opinions and suggestions of my community and many other players I have been able to exchange ideas with. But what do you think? What positive and negative aspects do you find in Mech Arena? And what should Plarium do to improve the game? Let me know in the comments. See you in another video, and until then, take care. Thank <laughs> you.